Welcome back to At Home with the Dogginses. Well, hello, friends. And welcome to the first Halloween theme park report of the season, possibly not the last. <laughs> true, true. We will get to knots in a second, but the first thing I did was I did go to Universal Halloween Horror Nights, but I did not do a whole lot while I was there because... I was working the day I went, and I was working the next day, so I both got there late and left early. Yeah, you, you were being very judicious with your energy. Yes, um, but I went down there, uh, and our friend Casey, who does work Scary Farm, that was her one night to get to go to Horror Nights. Um, our friend Ian was also there, but I did not run into him because he he uh, got there early and was on his own uh, and, and it's Pace. also a – for some reason, even though I think Knott's is probably the bigger in size theme park than like Universal, I feel like there's so much more wider ranging of shit at Universal because of the bi-levelness of the whole thing. So it's easy to lose, easier to lose people during this time of year. Yes. And, uh, you know, Knott's and Universal have a lot in common in the sense that they both accidentally became theme parks. Like, well, here we are. But uh, Knott's was actually built on a terrain conducive to becoming a theme park, <laughs> and Universal was not. No, it was not. But also, Knott's invented the theme park Halloween event, and Universal ripped them off and continues to do so to this day. In the grand tradition of all things Hollywood, so. <laughs> because the first scare zone uh, going down that New York street in uh, Horror Nights was a carnival freak show themed scare zone that is not at all carnival and mesmer 100 <laughs> percent not those things absolutely so i got to universal you know a little late because again i was coming from work met up with casey first thing we do together is terror tram now the bulk of terror tram this year the narrative of it was uh, an evil clown, but not just any evil clown. The grand high bitch of evil clowns, apparently. So the specific narrative of this evil clown was he was one of the clowns who was sighted around 2016. Oh, joy. <laughs> he was sighted around the Universal Hills. But even before that, <laughs> he like this clown was an early Universal Studios tour mascot who had joy. his own children's show. And there are all these like poorly photoshopped photos of him with like Carl Lamley and like on early tours yeah, and everything yeah. poorly photoshopping this clown into old tour photos Shh. even though I'm sure they could have easily found photos of an actual clown and just repurposed it fully, but fully. but uh so you know we're on the tram and uh it's like oh this clown's been sighted again and we're on the tram and the tour guide is doing like uh oh by the way there have been some sightings of this evil clown who uh, used to be here uh he showed up a few years ago and uh, two of my co like two of our tour guides have disappeared and we haven't seen them since R.I.P. Stanley. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's just like, rest in peace, my co-workers. I'm being very nonchalant about this. Yeah. But uh, then suddenly the clown hacks in with a video where he's doing his old children's show, except with the puppeteered corpses of the other two tour guides. And as it's you do. <laughs> all creepy and weird. So then, as Terror Tram always does, they let you off uh, before the Bates Motel. Um, you walk past that part of the tour that used to be where the uh, uh, Whoville sets are, but is now just like that fenced off area with a bunch of vehicles. Mm -hmm. That was like the junkyard. And there was a junkyard dog there who was just, you know, a man with a dog mask. Of course. <laughs> just growling at people from the mm -hmm. other side of the fence. Uh, go through the Bates Motel. The clown shows up. Like, lots of characters playing this one clown. Lots of uh, party goers, you know, at this clown party, either murdering or being murdered. Mm -hmm. Walking around the Bates Motel. Go up to the Psycho House. You can, of course, uh, veer off to get your photo with Norman if you so choose, but... You know, we don't care that much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Walk along to the War of the Worlds set where there's a section where it's like, you know, like Alley Cat Alley. And it's all these deranged Andrew Lloyd Webber cat people <laughs> just like jumping out over fences, snarling at nice, you. Nice, Deliberately scary, but still less terrifying than the movie version of that. <laughs> which Universal owns and they could have gone all out with it. Bring out the butthole cut, goddammit. <laughs> um... We still haven't watched the riff tracks of Cats, but we watched the supercut they posted on YouTube of all their jokes about the butthole cut. <laughs> so then, you know, War of the Worlds playing Crash, and it's just more like the clown keeps showing up, more general monsters, you know, gen general Terra Tram stuff. But then you get to cross the street 
and you get to walk through Jupiter's claim. Mm -hmm. And they mashed up all of the Jordan Peele movies because they had like characters being like the tethereds and they had uh, uh, a character, you know, like standing on the porch, stirring the tea from Get Out. And like, that's great. It, it's just the Jordan Peele horror movie mashup. And like to actually walk through the Jupiter's claim sets and, and have all this happen. And there were also, you know, performers there being like the Jupiter's claim employees. And they played the sounds of like, you know, jean jacket flying overhead and like mm -hmm. all, all the... Uh, all the employees looking up, being like, no, no. And it's uh, solid stuff, good use. Of, like, I, I hope that becomes much like the Psycho House and Norman Bates always being there, even when he's not part of the story. I hope the Jupiter's Claim Jordan Peele mashup is just a permanent part of Terror Tram. And from as now he on. does more horror films, like more of them will permeate into like this little co corner. Yeah, if they just keep adding more of his characters into that thing. But it, it was funny because uh, I was thinking a while ago about like there's this uh, there's this Key and Peele sketch where Keegan Michael Key uh, is playing a guy who's like. He's got priority boarding on the airplane, but even with priority boarding, he's still the last to be boarded. Like, just because mm -hmm. it's like, now, uh, just everyone else, they're boarded. It, it, uh, uh, Jordan is the, like, uh, uh, flight attendant checking them in. And it's like, now anyone with babies, now anyone with wheelchairs, now anyone with military service. And now we, we are now boarding Jason Schwartzman. <laughs> and, 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 just, and Jason Schwartzman comes and says all the, like, like the specific. So the punchline of the sketch is like, the plane crashed and still nobody is like rescuing Keegan from, but for that punchline with the plane crash, they filmed it on the war of the world set. Yeah. Yeah. You told me you were telling me about this. Yeah. So I thought it was very funny that I walked from a set I had seen in a key and peel sketch to all of Jordan Peele's movies yeah, mashed yeah. up. Then on the tram back up to the park, they played the trailer for the, uh, Jordan Peele three movie Blu-ray pack. Okay, okay. So, you know, that's fun. We, we already got one of them, but we should probably get, like, Nope when it comes out eventually, so. We enjoyed Nope a lot, it so. It was very, very good. I'm not normally a horror girl, but I really did enjoy that one quite a bit. Well, it was also, it's not that it wasn't scary, but I found it funnier than scary. L like. It's, it's not, so, my thing is, like, if there's enough funny in the horror, I can handle it. So, yeah. like, Theater of Bloods is, like, my kind of, like, my go-to standard yes. on that. <laughs> we spoke last year in talking about uh, Scary Farm, how you don't like mixing horny and horror, but you're all yeah. about haha -ha and horror. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's like there's a meme that goes around in the romance community when it's, like, you're opening up a book with a new uh, 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 kink, possibly, and it's the, it's, the, it's the Jim Rash, like, this better not awaken something in me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, so then after that, we went down to the lower lot. Um, they had killer clowns from outer space down there, but Casey had already done it earlier that day, and I did it when they had it a few years ago, and Casey said it was about the same as if, when it was a few years ago. Yeah, I watched, like, you know, the walk-in, both our friend Charlie's walk-in video and, like, um, a couple of other online, and it, it seems to be pretty standard. And, and you know, like, it was it was a... Really inventive looking premise, it seemed like. Yeah, it was a cool maze based on, you know... Uh, a cheap IP, let's be real. <laughs> yeah, b b based on not an obscure, obscure movie, but a less mainstream, you know, cult movie. Yeah. And, uh, like, I liked the maze when I went through it uh, the other year, but I didn't, like... No part of it was, like, I gotta do this mm. every year. The way, like, some scary farm mazes are, like, I love this and need to do it every year. Yeah. Um, but what we did do with the lower lot... Uh, first thing we did was uh, the Universal Monsters movie this year, which I think was uh, like Wolfman versus Dracula versus the Mummy or something. <laughs> nice. uh, like, I forget the exact name, like Titans of Horror. Let, let me look up what it's actually called. Uh, it looks like it's called The Mummy versus Dracula versus Wolfman Universal Monsters Legends Collide. <laughs> Uh, so this was in the spot that's like the tent alongside the back of the mummy ride. So appropriate place for a mummy maze, I suppose. I guess so, yeah. But it was going the other way than it usually goes. Usually for that location, you go like down to the end, like towards Transformers and turn right and the entrance is over there. This time you went around under the escalator and the entrance was in the back there mm. and comes out the front and drops you out in front there. Okay. Which, you know, cool. Um, <laughs> Unique. This maze was okay. Like, there was a lot I liked in it. There were, there were some really cool sequences. I did not feel like the three monsters together really congealed into a cohesive unit. It was just like, here's the monsters. Like, here's a mummy scene. Here's a Dracula scene. Here's a Wolfman scene. Now here's a scene where all three of them pop out at you at once. 
Yeah, it's it sort of from what I've heard about that one. It's kind of like there was like the high of 2018, then like 2019 was still pretty good, but you know, like mm. that was such a hot, a hard hit of the uh, of the monster related maze. Yeah, and then the bride really like hit it out of the park last year. Yeah, that that might be part of it. Is like the bride maze last year was so good and so narratively clear. Like yeah. like it was so good at telling the story it was telling that this maze felt just more like, here's stuff. Here is... And, like, not bad stuff, but just kind mm-hmm. of stuff. But also, there was, like, this pre-show video. Like, I, I, the premise of this maze is basically all three of these monsters are after this one amulet mm-hmm. for reasons. Of course. They're after this MacGuffin. And the pre-show before the maze keeps playing all these clips where it's, like, from the different monsters' perspective. Like, it's, it's you know, uh, uh, Talbot, the wolf man, talking about, I need this amulet to cure myself or whatever. And Dracula being like, I need this amulet for my power or whatever. And I don't think it was the mummy talking, but I think it was, like, some some researcher talking about, the mummy wants his hands on this amulet for... And it's like, it was all these clips from the old movies used in this footage, Mm -hmm. but the voiceover were so clearly like modern voice actors. Yeah. And not, and not like, uh, someone trying to sound like they're from the period of these films. Not like, uh, Jonathan Rhys Davies is the, uh, uh, Temple of Doom kind of voiceover. (laughs) Sure. Yeah. (laughs) It's, it's not like, um, like one of the criticisms people sometimes have of the reworked auction scene in Pirates is that Gray Griffin sounds so much more modern than all the uh, mm-hmm. that, that than all the old timey pirates that Paul Freeze voices throughout the ride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's like I I kind of get where that's coming from, even though I do like the reworked scene. But this was very much like I can't put my finger on it, but like the voice actors doing this did not have like the resonance you expect from old time movie character yeah. actors, which is what you want from a classic monsters absolutely setting. But, you know, they did what they could with what they had. But also now that you're sort of saying it, like, I, I really love the Greg Griffin scene, but I now kind of am curious, like, what would a Rusty Taylor sound like doing that now? Or like, Sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, rest in peace, but... Uh. Yes. Um, but also seeing as we actually know people who know Gray. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> Gray, fabulous job. We know you're not listening, but still, fantastic job. We know you're not listening, but we love you. Yeah. Um, so then after that, we did The Weekend After Hours. That is the only one out of all the mazes that I was like, maybe I'd be willing to go because I'm curious about, like, this specific one. I am not particularly familiar with The Weeknd's oeuvre. I'm, I mostly know The Weeknd from being introduced as the musical guest by Daniel Craig. And, and also in Uncut Joms, uh, which, by the way, have you seen the Postmates ad with uh, Julia Fox, her doing, like... I have not. Okay, so yeah, she's doing basically the Uncut Joms thing, but like with all the other foods, with other foods, we, I'll, we'll find it later and I'll, I'll show it to you. Maybe. Okay, sounds good. I'm sorry, just like, it just made me think of it, but he's in Uncut Gems as well. Sure. But, uh... Which I still haven't seen. <laughs> I really would like to at some point. Uh, uh, but I also have a low tolerance for anxiety in my own personal life, let alone... Yes, exactly. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm not super familiar with the week Weekend's oeuvre, but I, like, probably I know a lot of songs of his, because I recognize a lot of the songs playing in the queue. I just was yeah. like, ah, that's and, The weekend. And this is a sort of a continuation of a project he's been kind of working on for, like, two plus years in his music life, it sort of seems like. Yes, this is basically the maze based on his sort of, like, concept album music video series of, like, horror-themed music videos. Mm -hmm. And the music videos were playing in part of the queue, and then I was able to be, like, when we were going through rooms in the maze, like, ah, yes, I recognize that from the music video. Yes, yeah. But also, one part of the queue was playing the music videos. Another part of the queue, very close by to that part, was just playing songs, and uh, they were not synced up to each other, so there were spots where you were hearing two clashing weekend songs at the same time. Chaos. More of that classic Universal Studios sound control. Exactly. <laughs> More of that classic, you know, sitting at Hogsmeade and hearing Do the Bartman. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, this was the one that was uh, indoors in the big uh, soundstage behind Transformers, uh, where last year it was The Exorcist. And last year we saw them, uh, when we went down this way, we saw the basic framework of the Mario warp pipe. This time we saw it actually covered in the shape of a pipe, but not painted yet. Mm -hmm. So very exciting developments. Bit by bit, it's coming together, baby. Um, yeah, this one was really cool. Mm -hmm. Uh, very loud, very, um, strobe (laughs) lighty because, you know, it's music video aesthetics. 
and many, 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 many characters dressed as the weekend, both murdering and being murdered. <laughs> <laughs> the entrance, once you get inside, is like basically like through a giant vinyl cover. And, you know, it's playing the songs in the queue. But then every once in a while, like the music like slows down. It's like the thing's breaking down and the lights sort of flicker. Mm -hmm. And on all of the weekend's face on the vinyl cover, they painted like his eyes slightly different so that when the lights would flicker like the eyes would glow like sort of weird oh, that's, like not that's actual fun. lights in the eyes but just yeah, like yeah. an unsettling like it was a really cool effect so you go in there and then in there there is a animatronic slash mannequin of the weekend being like strapped to a chair and having like all of his like ideas sucked out of his brain mm -hmm. like, like he's trapped to like this thing where it's like the head and you see like the beams of light coming out of his head through the different wires and it's like his imagination is being sucked out and presumably brought to life in a twisted way. Yeah, I, I, I think some of this was like a, some of the story was both inspiration taken from the Martin Scorsese film After Hours, which I always find to be kind of fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah. But also I think he was in the middle of changing record labels when he was in the process of making for this, because I think the previous one he felt like he was getting like bled dry and now it's like yeah. creatively reborn. So uh, lots of really cool sequences. Um, probably a little more horny mixed in than you would like, honey, just because there's... I feel like this is the rare case I wouldn't mind the horny with the horror on it, though. <laughs> well, because it's specifically the music video. Yeah, yeah, no, like Come. I, yeah. I, 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 like, I'm not the biggest The Weeknd fan, but I, I have, I'm a fondness for his music, like, big time. There's a, uh, I Can't Feel My Face is possibly one of my favorite, like, mm. songs of the last decade, so. Yeah, and, like, I, I like the songs I've heard of his. I just haven't done, like, a deep dive mm -hmm. or anything. My one critique was, like, in the second to last room, there was this bit where it's, like, a subway train, like, starts moving towards you. Mm -hmm. And then the last room felt kind of underwhelming after that showpiece. Mm -hmm. And I think the last w room was actually supposed to be, like, the narrative ending where the weekend, like, escapes this madness. But it was so strobe lighty in there that I couldn't quite follow what was supposed <laughs> to be going one, on in that, that room. One. And there were also too many characters. And it's like, I get wanting to end on the plot point. But if I can't follow the plot point, it's better if you end on the spectacle of almost being hit by a subway train. Well, that's like, I think, like, the best part of, like, like watching the Killer Clowns video from, like, last year was, like, you, you, you nearly die by getting hit by a clown. And yeah. I think that just ends it perfectly. Um, so then after that, we went up to the Weekend After Hours bar, mm. uh, which is in the upstairs patio of uh, Jurassic Cafe. Ah, where we had underwhelming chicken. <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, upstairs patio there, uh, long wait to get to this bar. We didn't get any drinks. We just were really curious to try the pizza fries. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, they're not good. <laughs> They were much better than I expected. Fair, fair. They were basically like sort of, uh, you know, cafeteria fries. Like this is the thing I found with the universal pop-up food is they don't have the same fries as the rest of the park. Mm. They have like those cafeteria, like mildly crinkle cut fries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but like they were cafeteria fries and it basically was like a pepperoni hot pocket filling just poured on top of it. Mm. But it was better than normal theme park pizza, uh -huh. which again is the lowest lowest possible bar to fair, clear fair, fair. but for just like a snack it was good it was definitely not worth the wait in line at the weekend after hours bar to get it mm -hmm. but the bar was kind of a cool zone like it was this cool like they had some lounge chairs but it was mostly you know standing tables yeah, yeah, yeah. long lines and it's like if you like drinks i'm sure the drinks were good then there was also for the vip tour which is the r.i.p tour during horror nights nice if you want to pay extra money they actually had a proper seating area uh, of course of course but you know we didn't do that but you know we we liked the pizza fries more than we thought we would so then we went back upstairs we wanted to do uh la llorona which which was you know the the weeping woman it, it seemed to be part of the like dia de los muertos thing because like mm -hmm. the universal plaza once again much like last year had this dia de los muertos aesthetic mm -hmm. where they had like a booth with animatronic skeletons doing bad jokes. Yeah. And, and they had, uh, you know... Uh, the, the real question, was the booth with animatronic skeletons doing it both English and Spanish? I only heard it in English, but okay. I did not linger for very long. Okay. And they had, you know, like photo ops with... Uh, skeleton ladies and mm -hmm. stuff and you know people made up as skeletons um and it looked like that whole uh that whole sort of center of the upper lot was following the same aesthetic because mm -hmm. uh the maze there seemed to be uh continuing in with the at least 
Mexican inspired, if not Dia de los Muertos specifically theme. Um, mm-hmm. And the scare zone it led out into uh, was also very Dia de los Muertos. Yeah. And, you know, we walked around the scare zone a bit, did not wait in line for the maze just because it was so long a line. No, of course. And I really wanted to do the Universal Horror Hotel because that's in the old Walking Dead space. And I wanted to see how much work they did to <laughs> gut the old, like yeah. if they actually finally gutted the old Walking Dead space. And I found out later that uh, a guy I worked with in Pumpkin Eater last year worked in this maze. But I do not know if he was uh, there when I went through because, you know, he wears a mask. <laughs> of course. So this one was, uh, you go down where Walking Dead was in the outdoor queue. There were these TV screens playing this, these old newsreels about, you know, the horror story about, you know, Max DeVille, this, this diabolical man who built this hotel or bought this hotel or something to cash in on Universal Studios and the other rising wave of Hollywood Studios. Of course. Like this hotel in the foot of the Hollywood sign. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Universal really tying their branding in with, with, like, yes, we as a company worked with this creep. <laughs> um, but then there are all these mysterious suicides in his life, and then it turns out he murdered them all. So he's given the gas chamber... But while he's given the gas, like his last words were like, I will return yeah, or something. Of and so that's the newsreel outside. So you get through there and you get up and it's still looking a lot like the hospital from Walking Dead at of first. Of course. Of except course. less decorated. They still have like the hospital parking, you know, paint on the floor. But then you go inside the hallway and uh, there's another video playing inside, which is much more of like a touristy like, it seems to be that, like, this ho- this cursed hotel that has all these murder stories mm-hmm. is now being opened as a tourist attraction. Mm-hmm. As, like, so come and stay at the Haunted Hotel if you dare. Like, that's the kind of energy of that video in there. That's very much, like, because they're trying to, pr- uh, clearly they're pattering it off for the Cecil, right? Like, that's the whole deal, like, the Cecil Hotel. I think so. Like, mm-hmm. that seems to be, because, c- again, yeah, it, it, it's... Uh, uh, I think Maximilian Deville was the name uh-huh. of, of the fellow. Uh, then you go around the corner, and then where it used to be the don't open dead inside door, it's an elevator where there's an animatronic of a woman hanging herself. Two Disney birds, one stone, uh, I see. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's Tower of Terror and Haunted Mansion all yeah. at once. But then you turn, and where it used to be the switchbacks before Walking Dead, the maze has already started. So once you get past all this, it stops looking like... The Walking Dead hospital and starts actually looking like a hotel. Mm. And yeah, this one was cool. Uh, Committed more to the hotel theme than Luigi's Mansion 3 did. (laughs) But, uh... It is the crispy time of year. Maybe we should put that on to do another round of... Maybe. You know? (laughs) Uh, Yeah, and it's like many Max DeVille uh, performers popping out at various points. Many various demons and stuff that he has unleashed in his dark rituals. Mm -hmm. Lots of murder victims. Lots of, you know, period-appropriate ghosts. And also one performer being a very modern-looking girl. So I guess her deal was that she's one of the tourists in the new rebranded tourists. Or that might be, like, the Elisa Lamb stand-in. Maybe. I I don't know. Because this was, like, a girl in, like, a T-shirt and stuff. So, yeah. I I think that, yeah, yeah, there's uh, Cecil's most famous victim is, like, a 2013 Canadian student named Elisa Lamb. So I'm I'm expecting if it's that's the hotel they're modeling it after, that's probably the... uh, that person specifically. Quite possibly. I, 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 I don't know the details. And I haven't really looked... I haven't looked into an actual, like, official analysis or explanation of the story. So, you know. I'm a bit more of a horror, uh, like, a true crime head than you are. But, like, mm-hmm. the Cecil Hotel stuff really, like, weirds me out. And, like, good people are obsessed with that thing in a way that I find really disgusting. And we've talked about, like, my my mixed levels of comfort on true crime yeah. in general. And uh, using inspiration from true crime to do fictional crime has a degree of removal that I'm usually okay with unless it's a really tasteless crime to to, uh, to base it off of. But the aesthetics of the maze were very cool. The, the, The Art Deco Hotel... It's a good setting for horror. It was just weird that it was branded as the Universal... Like, when I heard that one of them was Universal Horror Hotel, I expected this to be the one that Universal Monsters popped up in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And not a separate one in the lower lot. But, you know, I uh, I don't make the rules. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yeah, that was the last maze we did. Uh, there were, you know, I was appreciative that there were a couple of, like, 
original mazes this year, like, mm-hmm. not based on a thing. Yeah. And and even, like, The weekend, it's not based on a movie or TV show. So, so that's a more interesting thing to base a maze off of. I, I would like... I, I, I feel like this has been pretty successful, like the weekends thing. Mm. I would like it if more people that – more organizations that do do these things, uh, these kind of haunted maze, collaborate with somebody that has like a horror interest, like to curate a maze like that. Because I think that's an interesting concept as a way to like do something that maybe is quote unquote – based in a thing that people know about, but is still a lot more original than just doing, like, The Exorcist or Halloween, you know? I remember uh, when I lived in Orlando, uh, I did Horror Nights two years when I lived in Orlando, and one year they had an Alice Cooper maze, which was, you know, a perfect marriage. That's rad, yeah. Uh, uh, Did they ever do Rob Zombie? I'm pretty sure they've done stuff with Rob Zombie, but I don't Mm. remember if I've... I think Rob Zombie has... Worked with universe with mm. worked with horror nights, but I do not remember the details. But also, one year they did a uh, they did a maze in Orlando when I was there. That was like that year's sort of comedy horror maze. The premise was basically Penn and Teller blew up Las Vegas. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> and it was basically it, it was like uh, you know post nuclear fallout Vegas with. Uh, all these video clips of Penn and Teller throughout the maze. That's fucking great. That's fucking rad. It, it, it was it was pretty, like, I don't remember a lot of the details of the maze. I just remember being like, I am on board for this. Yes. But yeah, like, The weekend, like, great maze. Um, Universal Horror Hotel and La Llorona. I don't know if La Llorona was good, but, but I like that it's, like, things that aren't based on movies amid the things that are based on movies. So Blumhouse did do a film about La Llorona, so I'm wondering if there might be some aspect of that that's probably in there. They might have incorporated something like that, but it didn't look to be uh, based on the Blumhouse film mm-hmm. because uh, Blumhouse had a separate maze that I did not have time to go through. Yeah. There, there was a Horrors of Blumhouse maze. Uh. There was also a Halloween Maze, Michael Myers Halloween. Yeah, 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 I know, I know. I think it was just based on Halloween 1 this time, but I don't know. It could have been based on any of the 18 movies in the Halloween series that are just called Halloween. Dear Lord, yes. We were talking when we were in line for Halloween 4 last year. We were trying to count which has been soft rebooted or rebooted more, Halloween or Terminator. Because both of those franchises have like 18 different movies that are like, okay, only the first two movies are canon to this one, or yeah. only the first movie is canon, or only, like, and, and you know, Halloween has Halloween 3, which is a separate mm-hmm. everything, and we didn't mention this in the episode, but I think when we were watching The Offer, I told you my theory that eventually, like, with all these soft, like, Terminator, Halloween, you know, Superman Returns did the only Superman 1 and 2 are mm. canon thing, with this whole soft reboot trend, before the end of our lives, somebody will make The Godfather 3 again. <laughs> like, just a new Godfather 3 where only Godfather yeah. 1 and 2 are canon. Absolutely. That might be uh, 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 Frankie Coppola's last attempt at revolution. that one. Yeah. <laughs> quite possibly, quite possibly. <laughs> or Dan Fogler will just grow up and direct it yeah, himself. Yeah. Oh, no, you know, if they if they do do that, they need to get Sophia to actually direct that one. There you go, and <laughs> give Francis a role on camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I would like to go back to Horror Nights to do the other mazes that I missed, because, mm-hmm. like, the other mazes looked cool. I wish I had had more time to spend at Horror Nights, but, you know, the, line, the lines were getting longer the longer no, we stayed. No, of course. And it's always... It's always the way. Um, yeah. This was also a Sunday I went on, mm. so maybe if I go on a Thursday, the lines will be a little shorter. Probably. Thursday and Sunday are the cheaper days, but, uh, you know, if I go on a Thursday and also just beeline for the mazes I haven't... Oh, we also did walk through the little uh, Death Eaters scare zone they're doing in mm. uh, Potter. And, you know, for a, for an area filled with wizard Nazis written by a turf, it was neat yeah (laughs) they did cool fog and lighting effects in there it was just basically in the little alleyway sort of behind um like like where the exit for for dragon challenge was in florida but there's Mm -hmm. no equivalent to that in hollywood it was basically just that corner so if you just want to walk through hogsmeade and avoid the death eaters you can okay 
Um, but if you want to do that, why are you at Horror Nights? Yeah. Uh, yeah, because there's there, there's not a puppet up or anything fun like that to do, so, like, why, why bother? Well, there's Jabberwockies. <laughs> no, there's not. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to see creepy dancers. Ooh, I can spookily kickflip. Ooh. <laughs> Spook kickflip. <laughs> um, well... Horror Nights is worth going to if you just want to go to Springfield and just hear exclusively a loop of Treehouse of Horror versions of the Simpsons theme. Oh, that's fun. That's fun. <laughs> Treehouse of Horror slash the one Simpsons theme in the style of the Addams Family theme mm-hmm. slash the one Simpsons theme in the style of the Monsters theme. Of course. <laughs> but yeah, I would like to go back to Horror Nights and do the other mazes I missed. I'd like to see Horrors of Blumhouse. I'd like to see... La Llorona, I'd, I'd like to see the Halloween, to, to see which Halloween it is. I presume the original Halloween one, but, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd like to see all these. I always thought when they had Halloween mazes every year, I, th- I always thought it was a missed opportunity to not have the entrance to the Michael Myers maze be right by Shrek 4D. It, you think you're clever, don't you? <laughs> you are, but you think you're clever, don't you? <laughs> Honey, I'm a white man with a podcast. Of course I think I'm way more clever than I am. <laughs> Hey, would you like to look a little bit more about your universal experience on Halloween? I would like to talk a little bit more about the Universal Company doing horror. Because, yes, I did go back to Halloween Horror Nights on Halloween itself. Yes. Uh, mainly because that was the night that was still available when uh, my friends and coworkers got tickets. And I was like, I, I'll go with y'all because I do want to go back. I'll just say off the bat, I did most of the mazes on my return visit. Still didn't do Killer Clowns because I had done it uh, mm-hmm. in the past. Um, I heard they changed a little bit, but but it was functionally mostly the same maze. I watched the video of this year and I compared it to last year, and it's it's not too much changing. It's just it's more the pacing is a little bit different. And uh, I did not do Halloween for reasons we'll get to, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but those reasons basically amount to the line was too long. Yeah. <laughs> I, I meet up with my friends and coworkers AJ and Olivia. Uh, we do uh, Legends Collide for th- their first time on this coast, my mm-hmm. second time. Uh, they had done Legends Collide on the other coast because they went to Orlando for a wedding and they mm-hmm. did Horror Nights while they were out there. And yeah, apparently that one was mostly set at the dig site and ours is set at the museum. Oh, so ours okay. is the sequel to theirs. Uh, and then we do, uh, you know, Terra Tram for my second time. Still great. Mm-hmm. We then get some food. And then we do Horrors of Blumhouse, which I had not done last time I was there. Mm. So Horrors of Blumhouse, I thought it was going to be like a whole anthology from a bunch of Blumhouse movies. It's just two. Mm-hmm. It's a double feature. Freaky and Black Phone, neither of which I've seen. Yeah. But I like that the facade was like a video rental store. And it had like the, you know, like the display posters like now showing Freaky and Black Phone. I was like, Mm -hmm. that's fun. Uh, So Freaky is, of course, the Freaky Friday murder movie where I think Vince Vaughn is the killer. Yes, he is. And he swaps with a girl he was going to murder, I think. Yes. So. I think I remember there's like an enchanted blade and he half stuck it in her. So the powers like, tra- like there's a swap basically. And then she has to stab him again in order for them to re-swap or something like that. Sounds about right. Yeah. So, you know, going through, uh, there's some cool scenes early on. Like there's a murder going on behind a scrim that like when the lights go down, it's like the wall of the high school. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you go into like this room and there's like a sort of hypnosis spiral projected on the end of the hallway And then you go into the bedroom where I guess it's the scene where the swap happens because, like, the girl's on the bed, like, looking at her hands, like, looking at herself. And then Mm -hmm. the guy who doesn't look that much like Vince Vaughn, but what you're going to do, like, pops out of the closet. Yeah, yeah, And so then after that, it's basically the girl with the murderer's brain inside her doing most of the pop outs. And I was actually impressed with how much all the actresses, all, all the characters playing this girl looked like each other. Mm-hmm. Like, I was actually impressed with, at least in the light, I was like, oh, it really seems like, I thought, it really feels like I just saw you in the other room. Yeah. But they're different performers. Um, there was one fun murder I liked with the girl, which was like, she's, there was one fun scene where she's like uh, murdering a guy with a table saw. Mm-hmm. And it was this bit where it's like, there was this prop, you know, guy who's like, be, 
who's like being split in half and she's like pushing it against the blade. And like, Mm -hmm. that was a cool scene with the fun effect. And then it goes to black phone. Uh, Again, I haven't seen the movie, but I've seen the poster with Ethan Hawke wearing that mask. Yeah. And this was mostly just pop outs of that mask dudes wearing that mask. Yeah. And it's like, you know, just strictly as a haunted house. I thought the freaky half was more fun than the black phone half. Like the freaky half had more interesting scenes. Yeah. Um, Again, haven't seen the movies. Can't compare. So then we did a Universal uh, Horror Hotel again for my second time. Mm -hmm. Still think it's great. Uh, Still think it's a really fun designed one. So then we did uh, La Llorona, which I found out since my last visit is apparently a returning maze. Apparently they did it a few years ago. Oh, okay. Uh, Don't know. Like, I think it was before I moved out here. I'm not sure. I don't know what year it was. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how uh, similar... Like, I don't know how much it's just an exact repeat and how much is, you know, how much has changed. I know there was like a year or two ago, there was a La Llorona movie that came out or something like that. So I'm wondering if they were trying to maybe tie in aspects of that film to this, maybe. It's possible. I couldn't tell. Mm -hmm. I I, I couldn't tell you. Uh, But we were nervous going in because the queue for this wrapped, you know, La Llorona is basically in the Universal Plaza, the the courtyard spot where Bride Mm -hmm. was last year. But the queue for this went through the Minion Mayhem queue. Wild. So, like, we're going through the queue for the Despicable Me ride, but then we're coming out the entrance to that queue and going back and meeting back up with uh, the, um, you know, into the plaza. So then we go into La Llorona. There's, like, a voiceover that's going throughout the maze that's, like, explaining the legend, like a creepy old woman saying, uh, La Llorona, like, she was, like, the weeping woman, and... Saying a bunch of stuff that uh, was kind of hard to hear because, you know, the dialogue blurbs were a little fuzzy and a little longer mm-hmm. for, for a lot of it than the rooms they were in. <laughs> like, 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 uh, like not quite, um, not quite synced well. And it's also sometimes when you're doing a walkthrough maze, timing is not great uh, for seeing the scenes as they're supposed to be seen. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you see just a reset. Sometimes you see, uh, you know, it's it's it, it's it is what it is. And especially when it's just automatic looping dialogue, like mm-hmm. you you get what you get. But like you go through the maze, like you're in a church where there's a bunch of like mourning people, and one of you know most of them are mannequins. One of them is a character who like sort of just stands up and lurches at you quietly. Uh, you go through catacombs. There are a couple of pop outs, and there's like a uh, black light like graffiti i guess that says la llorona Mm -hmm. uh then you go through a bit in in the bit where you're sort of in the outdoor area going down the french courtyard there there's a bit with a bridge over a pond with like dead bodies in the pond and the voiceover is just like she drowned them in the river and uh then a you know character pops out at one point there Mm -hmm. and you're going through and it's like you know a lot of catacomby you know old villagey stuff and the whole time i'm thinking this is cool, but it's not really worth the wait. Mm-hmm. Like, the line was so long, I was hoping this would be mind-blowing, but it's just been pretty good. Mm-hmm. But then we get into a bedroom where there's a giant La Llorona looking like the ring girl, sort of, like, crouched on the wall, mm-hmm. eating a kid whose legs are, like, dangling out of the mouth. Oh, wow. Uh, I, I think it was, like, you know, animatronic, but looked mm-hmm. cool. And then the very next room is another bedroom with another giant La Llorona eating a victim who was played by a character and she's like thrashing on the bed. Like, like it's like her legs are being eaten. Mm -hmm. Her legs are being eaten and she's like thrashing around on the bed, waving her arms and screaming. Mm -hmm. And those scenes were so cool. Nice. Like those scenes were like, okay, this, this is like, this is, these are highlight sequences. And then, you know, go back into a dark hallway. And then there was a room with a larger than average La Llorona, not quite because those statues. I couldn't tell if this was like fully mechanical or if it was like a performer with stilts and extensions. But this big weeping woman like sort of reaches out at us while the light flashes. Mm-hmm. Basically similar to that giant witch's hand that comes out in Origins, mm-hmm. like coming out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it lets right out into... uh the Pueblo del Terror Scare Zone, which is another, you know, Dia de los Muertos, like Latin America legends and monsters. So La Llorona is among other monsters in this scare zone. Mm -hmm. And again, very good. They've been very good, at least over the past couple of years, of marrying 
the uh, maze in the courtyard with the scare zone in the French streets mm, of mm-hmm. having the one like lead into the other. Oh, fun. Because last year it was the bride maze led into like the scream queens of the screen or whatever it was called. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with all the lady monsters. And in 2019, the holidays of horror one led into the just the Christmas uh, scare zone. Mm, mm-hmm. So, you know, it's it's such a good marriage of attraction and themed area which is something that's not always universal strength, mm-hmm. uh, but it's so good here. So then all that's left to do are the ones out in the old Curious Storage lot. And, you know, we take the long walk out there through Hogsmeade. Uh, we go past uh, a photo op where it's like a Chucky, a good guy's doll box that you can, like, get inside. It's... and post. We don't wait for this photo op mm-hmm. because it's a long line for it, but we walk past it and it's like, huh. Neat. It, it, it's funny because I was um I was waiting outside in City Walk while y'all were going through, and there was a woman walking around with a giant Barbie box because she was dressed as Barbie that she would take as her photo prop. So uh, she had an assistant basically holding the box, and it, it just sort of sounds like kind of that was hap- like like just getting to watch that is like a personal version versus like what was happening in the park. Like that's kind of fun. It's funny because this was the second year in a row that I noticed a lot of Chucky marketing, but no actual, like, Chucky attraction. Yeah. Because I forgot to mention earlier, going down the Starway, I didn't notice this when I went with Casey, but I noticed this when I was meeting up with AJ and Olivia, that going down the Starway, the safety rules are being read by Chucky and the Bride of Chucky. Oh, fun. And So Jennifer Tilly and Brad Dorf. Yes. I, again, could not tell if it was actually Brad Dorf, but it sounded like Jennifer Tilly. Mm-hmm. And... I don't follow Jennifer Tilly on Instagram, but I see her pop up on my Instagram feed a lot and mm-hmm. recommendations. And she is like constantly posting Chucky related stuff. I think there's a TV show now that she's on, like a Chucky TV show that there, she's there on. There is a Chucky TV show. I, I wasn't sure if she was on it, but because I remember them promoting the Chucky TV mm-hmm. show last year at Horror Nights. Um, but it's like she seems to be all in on the Chucky franchise as being, you know, her better comedic horror series than her role in the haunted mansion yeah yeah um, well she she knows where where her money's coming in from and it's yeah. like it's a place that she appreciates so but if her enthusiasm for chucky as a brand is at all genuine then i am not surprised if she actually did the escalator safety announcement mm-hmm. but it's like it's this whole thing where chucky and uh his bride who's a character whose name i don't actually know because i haven't really watched the chucky movies Neither either have i yeah but uh but they're like arguing about uh, their bedroom. Brother. It's like, what are you doing, baby? I'm doing the safety announcement. It's like, well, I want to do the safety announcement. And, and it's good, dark, comedic banter. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also kind of typical battles of the sexes, you know, bickering couple things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but just funny because it's haunted dolls doing it. Yeah. Anyway, I have heard that apparently next year there will actually be a Chucky maze. Fuck yeah, awesome. So, you know, good for them. But anyway, we then uh, go down to the zone. We look at the two mazes that are available down there. It's uh, Scarecrow, The Reaping, and Halloween. John Carpenter's Halloween. Mm -hmm. It's tricky when you say the Halloween maze because it's Halloween Mm -hmm. Horror Nights. But the Halloween TM, the movie Mm -hmm. maze, it's a who's on first situation. Yeah. But yeah, I I looked it up. It is John Carpenter's original Halloween because I think at the last episode I speculated this could be any of the eight movies in the series that are just called Halloween. Yeah. Or it could be the series as a whole. But no, it's specifically the first one. Um, So we look at the two. uh, Halloween has a slightly longer line. And we're like, uh, you know, Scarecrow the Reaping. That's an original maze. We want to do all the original things. Mm -hmm. A team member on the upper lot also told us that people are saying this is the scariest maze. Mm -hmm. So you go through. It's like you go into a farmhouse. There's like a mechanical crow on top of a grandfather clock, which, you know, feels very the Raven in the Haunted Mansion to us. Mm -hmm. Uh, but then you go in, there's like rubbery, like as opposed to other mazes that have like curtains or cloth strips hanging, this has like rubbery, there may be their vines, maybe their entrails, I mm-hmm. couldn't tell, hanging, and you can really smell the rubber as you walk past mm. them. Uh, then you go into a dining room where there's a bunch of mannequins of dead bodies and there's like crows pecking at the dead bodies mm-hmm. and a scarecrow pops out, you know, just give me slight vibes of your pumpkin eater maze that you were in last year. No, yeah. I, I had a very pumpkin eater feeling through all of this. Mm-hmm. Um, slightly better, you know, sets than pumpkin eater mm-hmm. and like more clearly defined like, ah, this is the farmhouse. This is the barn. Yeah. But uh, 
you know, going to the next room, there's a dead body impaled on like corn husks. It's farm motif. You go into like these wooden barn halls and we go through one uh, hall where there's pop out windows on both sides and we get scarecrows popping out at the exact same second at us from both sides. We got double teamed by scarecrows. Hot. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry to mix horny with horror for you. Oh, well, you know what? It is what it is, love. Um, Then you go into like, there's like, a butcher sort of area where there's like these dead animals and entrails. And, you know, it's, it's all just like going through like barns and there's scarecrows popping out and there's like a hanging body and stuff. Then we go into a room where there's like crows above us cawing and it's dripping water on us. Mm -hmm. And I think the idea is supposed to be these birds are shitting on us. Oh, fun. And even though we knew it was just universal squirting water as always, Gross. It was gross. It was like, I expect that at Sewer of Souls and at Six Flags, not at Universal <laughs> Studios. Yeah. Uh, and then it's just like, you know, there's a lot of scarecrows popping out everywhere. There's like flashing lights, big scarecrows, and then banjo music. And we get out of that and I'm like, so when they said that's the scariest, they meant it's the grossest mm-hmm. and also the most relentless. Because towards the, in the back half of the maze, it was like every like... Th- Two seconds at the most was the gap between, like, pop-outs and Mm -hmm. screeches and loud music. And it was just, we weren't scared by it. We were just overwhelmed and grossed out. Yeah. So, like, again, creative set design. And, like, I don't know how much of that is, like, they directed the maze to be like this and how much was just the characters taking the liberty of being like, Mm -hmm. we're going to go all fucking out. I don't know. but but, But it was gross. So, you know. Sounds gnarly. <laughs> I appreciated things in it, but I didn't love it. And then we look at Halloween and we're like, eh, it says 85 minutes, but the line doesn't look that long. But then we realize the reason it doesn't look that long is because the queue is going into the parking garage. And we take one look in there and we're like, oh, that's the longest fucking line I've ever seen in my life. Mm-hmm. So we decide to skip Halloween. We just go and sit down and watch a walkthrough on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And it's pretty much what we expected where it's a couple scenes from the movie, but it's mostly just every five seconds there's a different character and the Michael Myers mask popping out at you. Mm-hmm. And then at the end, the one thing that looked cool about it was at the end, there's like a Hall of Mirrors room where there's like what appears to be like 50 Michael Myers mannequins just standing there. Mm-hmm. But they're basically all just living statues. Oh, and as okay. you get to them, they all like move and mm-hmm. startle you. And it's like, it's well populated, but it's still just the thing they sometimes do with mazes based on movies where they kind of run out of interesting scenes from the movies yeah. to do. So it's just, and here's a dark room where the guy from the movie is here. Mm-hmm. Like, that's why I was so disappointed with the Shining maze they did. Because I had really, uh, several years ago, because I had really high hopes for the Shining. Because that movie is all hallways, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, they could do so much with the set design of the hallways. But it's like, every third room was just a dark, all black room where someone in a Nicholson mask pops out at you. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's the end of the Halloween Horror Nights report, now that it's too late to affect uh, whether or not you go to Horror Nights. Mm -hmm. And yeah, ended up loving La Llorona uh, after not an underwhelming first half, but just a first half that was like, okay, this is standard, but Mm -hmm. I waited too long for standard. Yeah. But like the last couple of scenes tipped it into love territory. Mm -hmm. Thought Bloomhouse was fine. Uh, Again, liked the first half more than the second half in that case. Scarecrow, gross. Just didn't care for. Had some scenes I liked, but I just didn't care for. And uh, that's Horror Nights. Yeah. All in all, decent. Yeah. Uh, When we said Universal Centric, we meant Universal Centric today. Yes. Uh, So, what did you think of Horror Nights? And what do you think of these old movies we were talking about? Let us know. Yeah. 